the previous episode, I got out my bike and Winston's trailer and cycled to Eriske, where we hiked up the highest hill on the island. It was steeper than I thought and the weather wasn't great, but we still got amazing views from the top. Now after cycling back to the campsite, we took a few minutes to stop, reflect and take everything in as we continue on our 64 day adventure. So the first job of the day is to take Winston to the toilet and this usually involves me wandering around the campsite in my pyjamas. Winston then gets his breakfast and then it's time for my breakfast. Now whilst I eat my muesli, let me show you around Kilbride campsite in South Uist. So over there you've got your water, your bins and your chemical disposal and everything else you need is inside this block. Now I need to mention that the owner is super chilled and this is not a strict campsite. So before I arrived I contacted the owner and I asked him could I check in early due to my ferry times and this wasn't a problem at all. Now payments to the campsite are also all in cash and he seemed happy to receive that payment whenever during my stay and also the pitch boundaries are very relaxed. It was kind of a case of if you could fit your van there you could stay there which did mean that we had a few nights where people were parked right outside my back door but overall I didn't have any problems. Now I stayed at the end of May in 2024 I had a hard standing electric pitch and I stayed for four nights. In total, it cost me £100, which averaged £25 per night. Now, after the 16 campsites that I booked for this trip, this campsite was equal ninth, which puts it about average in terms of cost. Now they do also have a cafe on site, but the menu is mainly chips, burgers, sandwiches, etc, which didn't really take my fancy at the time, so I didn't eat in there. But it does have a beautiful outdoor seating area, and if you need to sit inside for bad weather for example, the building also has really big windows, so you always have a very good view of the bay. And now it's time for lunch. Smoked haddock and mature cheese fish cake, Mediterranean couscous and carrots. So I'm having a bit of a nightmare. I'm just watching people out my window. See ya. See where they're going. But I'm having a bit of a nightmare trying to do my laundry. So I went, this, this campsite was really full yesterday, full like, like yesterday evening, most people have left this morning, but I was trying to do my washing this morning and everyone else was trying to do theirs as well, so I thought well, I'll, I'll wait until it quietens down a little bit. Then I went back again and then the whole facility block was closed for cleaning, so couldn't do it then. And then I went back and the washing machine has obviously completed a cycle and someone is needing to come and collect their washing and I stood around and waited 15-20 minutes, nobody had came. Now the washing machine tells you how long the wash is going to take, it usually takes about 30 to 40 minutes depending on the wash, um, so if you just note that and then go back, it's what most people tend to do, but yeah, 20 minutes or so afterwards no one had arrived, 
and I was thinking, well, could I just take their stuff out of the washing machine and put it in the dryer? It wasn't clothes and underwear and stuff like that. It was just like a couple of blankets and the towel, I think it was. So I could just, should I just take them out and put them in the dryer? But then I looked in the dryer and the stuff in the dryer. So someone needs to collect whatever's in the dryer and someone needs to collect their washing and possibly move it to the dryer. I don't know if that's what's causing the backlog. So I stood around in the washroom for a little bit longer and then somebody came in with a bag and I was like, are you here to collect your washing? Thinking really excited that I'm going to be able to put mine in now. And she's like, no, I've came to do a load. And I'm like, oh, get behind the queue. <laughs> like I'm waiting as well, but I'm waiting for someone to come and take these out. So we need someone to come and empty the dryer. We need someone to come and empty the washing machine and I need to do a load as well. We kind of both stood there for a little bit going, oh. And then somebody else came in and I was like, are you come to collect your washing? She was like, no, I came to see if it's available. And I'm like, no, there's like two people in front of you and there's two people already in the machines. But the campsite's quiet now. There's not that many people here. So unless we've all decided to do laundry at the same time, just trying to see if those people went into the facilities block and then they're coming out with a bag. I find this really annoying because it's such a waste of time. I have stuff to do, I've got work to do. Doing your laundry on a campsite is annoying enough because you've got to keep wandering back and forward, back and forward, back and forward to the laundry room. Especially when you're using the dryer because you've got to keep going back to check, is it dry, is it dry, is it dry? At least when you hang it out, it's just right outside the caravan. But yeah, I might give it one more go. And then if not, I'm probably just gonna try and do it late tonight. I do want to hopefully get some laundry done before I move to our new campsite tomorrow. So, fingers crossed. Now, after some successful curtain twitching, I did manage to get my laundry in later that afternoon. Can't forget the scent boosters. So this cost me £3.50, which is a good price for a campsite wash. So good things are happening right now. I went to check the washing machine, it was available. I put the washing in. Because I'm doing it this afternoon instead of this morning, the weather is now dry, which means I haven't got to pay to use the dryer. I can hang all my washing out. So good news there. I've got about 10 minutes and I've got to go get it. But as I'm just kind of preparing to get my washing, so I put my washing line out, I'm just about to get my hooks out so I can hang my underwear and stuff up. I managed to find my oats. I don't know if you've been following this, so if you even know what I'm going on about, but I wanted to have some porridge in the morning and I didn't have any oats and it was really weird because I always have oats. I always have oats. And I remember I purposely didn't buy any because I thought I had some. And when I needed them, I could not find them anyway. Anyway, I'm just going to get the hooks out and I found them. So yeah, good day just realised that it doesn't take an awful lot to make me happy, does it? It's these little things, you've got to love the little wins. So I don't want to be hanging my underwear outside for the whole campsite to see. So what it is, I have these little S hooks, I put them on these rails. I'll hang a couple off there, I've got the same on the other side. And then I open this window, keep the fly veil down because then people can't see in. It creates a nice little breeze. Also, this um, this is the fridge and it kicks out a little bit of heat here. So it's got heat coming up, breeze coming through, and that helps to dry my underwear. So it's now time to collect the washing and to peg it out. Now, I know that a lot of people find this type of content boring, but this is the real life of traveling in the pod. And I don't want to glamorize my adventures. So I never try to get the perfect shot, I don't have a drone, 
and I don't change the colours during the editing process. I literally just wander around with my little action camera and I point it at the stuff I see and I document what I'm doing. I wear no makeup, I stuff my hair under a hat and I'm usually out in wind and rain. But my content is real. And I think in a world of filters, Photoshop and artificial intelligence, I think we're losing sight of what is real in both people and places. So yeah, this content might be a little bit boring for some, but I'm not trying to tell a fictional story. I'm sharing my real pod life. And after that little speech, I think I've earned a cup of tea and some custard creams as I wrap up another day in the pod. So I've just taken Winston out to go to the toilet before bed and he pooed right on top of a nettle. Now it's dark outside so I just put my hand in the poo bag and stretched down to pick it up and I got my hand stung. And then I had to stand there with a poo bag and the light on my phone trying to pick these pieces of poo out of a nettle. Yeah, I know. It's because you pooed in a nettle. But what he doesn't know is that tomorrow I'm calling the vets to get him an appointment. Hopefully tomorrow. So I'm kind of going to get my own back. Yeah? You pooing in a nettle and I'm taking you to the vets. Is that even? <laughs> is that even? Yeah, good boy. <laughs> I know, I still love you though. I do, I still love you. Just don't pull on any more nettles, please. So I've just had to get out of bed and put my pop top down because right outside next to me is a motorhome and it's got two bikes on the back. And over the bikes is like a cover to protect them. But it hasn't been tied down properly. Or well, it has been tied down, but it's, it's very loose. So it's flapping. You guys know how I feel about flapping. So I'm laid in bed and it just sounds like someone's shaking a bin bag every couple of minutes. And it's, it's, honest, it's like Chinese water torture. Can't take it. So... I put the pop top down for a bit of extra noise insulation and um, yeah Winston's already snoring I don't know if you can hear him but hopefully I can get to bed now Oh, hello. Um, I'm currently travelling through the Hebrides and I need some more medication for my dog. Um, I was wondering if you had any appointments available um, later this afternoon slash evening. Okay, okay. Um, could I take, was it for your dog, you said? It is, yes. Yeah, and what's your dog's name? Winston. Okay, okay. Would you be able to send over um, a history for him to us, if possible, please? Yeah, I could do. Um, am I best off just calling my vets and getting them to send it to you? Yes, just email it over to us. So I can give you an email address if you'd like. Yep, two seconds. Let me just grab a pen to write it down. Um, and then I'll call my vets and they'll send it across. Um... Right, so as you heard, Winston is going to the vet, but he's only going for some more of his medication. So he is on a controlled medication for his arthritis, and our local vet usually supply us with three months at a time. But this time, I had to see another vet when I was at home, and well, another vet in the same practice, and they would only give me one month. 
which I was a little bit annoyed at, but he was saying that it had to do with his veterinary license or whatever, so what can you do? So I took the one month supply and obviously because I'm going away for two months, I needed to get some more en route. So I've just called the local vets in the campsite that I'm going to today, because we're moving campsite today, and they can't actually fit us in this afternoon because today is their surgery day, but I have got an appointment for tomorrow evening. They needed all his records, so I've contacted my vet at home, sent across all his records. So I'll take him down for his appointment tomorrow, and fingers crossed, we can get more of his medication. This medication is an absolute nightmare. Every time I try and get some, it's, because it's controlled, because it's also used in humans, there's so many hoops you have to jump through in order to get it. But, fingers crossed, we should be okay for tomorrow. So it is windy, as you can see, still got the pop top down, and I've got to get the bike on the roof. So let's hope that goes okay. I'm hoping the wind's just going to blow through it rather than blow it onto me because it is blowing in. It's blowing in that direction, and I need to lift the bike in that direction. So it is going against me. But I have just almost lost one of the back doors to my van. The wind just took it. But um, still attached. So let's try and get these bikes. Well, these bikes. I say bikes because I keep thinking Winston's ride, but he's got a trailer. So bike on the roof, trailer in the boot, and I'm a poet and I didn't even blooming know it. Winston's given me such a look of disdain. So that also isn't really windy, it's also raining. My favourite type of weather. I can never get this wheel off with my bare hands. I've always got to go and get a screwdriver. Now it's time to hitch up so we can hit the road. After pulling out of my pitch, I always like to stop and hop out and do a quick walk around to make sure that I've not left anything on the floor. Usually it tends to be Winston's toy or something, but I just like to make sure that everything is in the van and in the caravan.
Now this two-way road was a little bit of a novelty, but it wasn't long before we were back on the single tracks. So we are now moving to our sixth campsite of the trip, which is on the Isle of Benbecula. Now there's no ferries this time, we just drive straight up that road, which I couldn't get my animated line to follow, but you get the idea. Now when I'm driving, I don't get to see much of the scenery because I'm too busy looking out for cars, cyclists and making sure that my caravan is still on the road. So it's only by watching this footage back that I get to really see how beautiful the roads are that I've driven down. About an hour later, we arrived at Otter's Edge campsite. I've got the smallest caravan here and I think I've got one of the longest pitches. Excellent. Now to reverse on to pitch and it didn't quite go to plan. I'm usually okay at reversing around a corner to the right, but not this time. in the end. Shambles at the beginning, but we recovered. That is the main thing. The sun is going down now. Been at it for a while. And I have had enough of this. I doubt that we can solve it. Been trying for so long. And I just can't ignore that it won't no, we will never be that good again. Don't drag it out. 
this track and you've got this field and Winston's running around looking for his toy at the moment and wanting me to throw it but what he doesn't realise or never realises what he's bothered by is that there are tons and tons of rabbits so as we kind of keep walking up I just see them darting all over everywhere and he is not interested in them whatsoever he'd rather play with his plastic toy And then on the other side of there, so I'm guessing you go up that bit there, is the beach. Don't fancy walking down the beach right now because it's quite blustery, but let's go check it out anyway. So far, I really like this campsite. It's professionally run, there's online booking, there's proper hitches, it's not just a case of park it wherever you can. The facility block looks nice, although I've not been in the facilities yet. I like how the campsite is there, so it's a little bit more sheltered. And then you have this short walk to this big field where I can let my dog off the lead and run around. And then if I want to, I can go onto the beach. But I don't have to go onto the beach if I don't want to get my dog or my boots wet and sandy. And again, if it's really windy, you can kind of stay a little bit more sheltered here because you've got the dunes on the other side. There is good 4G mobile signal. So I'm hoping that my booster will give me 
an even better internet connection. I had a nice friendly welcome. So yeah, nothing, nothing not to like at the moment. The only thing that could let this site down is the showers. Now, I know that the showers are included, so I don't have to pay extra for them. And I also know that they're not timed. I think they're push button, which I'm absolutely fine with. But the kicker is going to be how hot does the water get and how much water comes out. And is it those stupid spinny tyres? Spinny tyres, those stupid spinny showers. So we shall see. I will be having a shower this evening because I need to wash my hair. And if they've got good showers, then it'll be 10 out of 10. And Winston likes it because he likes this field and the beach. So I'm walking back to the road now, which means that we're leaving the beach in the field and he is walking very slowly behind me to tell me he wants to stay and keep playing. But I'm hungry. I want my lunch. This is about one o'clock. I've not had anything since breakfast. So we will just have to come back later. Come on, Fuzz. Come on. I know. I know. Come on. <laughs> 